Here we've stumbled upon a group of caterpillars. They look to be pretty much fully grown, but they're not really moving and they're all hanging in a U-shape? Are you also wondering why they're all doing this? Well, you've come to the right place. Let's dive in. Well, this particular caterpillar is the walnut caterpillar moth. It can be found in eastern North America from Ontario, Canada, all the way down to Mexico, and as far west over as Minnesota. They are a tan and cinnamon brown moth with about a two inch wingspan. And they almost look like a folded dried up leaf when not in flight. Very good camouflage, look at this. The life cycle of these moths is they will start emerging from their overwintering pupa in mid-May in springtime and they're present through late July. During this time, the adults will lay eggs not long after emerging, and those eggs will hatch 8 to 10 days later. Second generations, and possibly even thirds, can occur in warmer climates. Those moths will emerge in July and August. The baby larvae, these baby caterpillars, generally all stay together during most of their development as they feed and skeletonize these leaves. They are feeding machines, these little ones. And each time a caterpillar grows too big for its current exoskeleton, it molts to allow further growth until it reaches its final instar. They usually go up to five instars. It's just something most all insects do to grow, shedding their older, smaller exoskeleton. The female has the potential to lay hundreds of eggs. They are pale green eggs in a closely spaced mass and the newly hatched caterpillars are going to be pale green as well. Then they'll become a reddish color, a reddish brown color, and when fully grown, they turn black with whitish hairs. And they prefer pecan, walnut, and hickory trees. During the molting processes, when they're ready, these caterpillars will congregate together on the trunk of a tree or a large branch. It's not specifically stated if this gathering is for safety in numbers or just simply more of the gregarious behavior of caterpillars. But the thrashing around as a group could be enough to defend themselves from certain attackers, so it must be all of the above. What we do know is that this U-shape that they are making is their defensive posture. When they're in protection mode or ever disturbed, the second and fourth stage caterpillars will assume this defensive posture where the front and hind body segments are raised. That's what we're seeing here. If one of these caterpillars or any of these caterpillars are at their fifth stage, they don't need to stay to defend or posture. They will simply fall to the ground. When they're fully grown, they get to their fifth stage, they drop to the ground anyways and will burrow into the soil or leaf litter to begin pupation. They don't spin a cocoon. And sometimes if you were to try to pick one of these up off the tree, it will most likely spit up on you. That's something they might do. They regurgitate on anything that picks them up as some kind of defensive measure. After these caterpillars molt, they'll leave behind a pile of their shedded hair and skin, but in other cases and other caterpillar species, they will eat their older skin. Not because of any hunger, but just so they don't leave any traces of having been there, leaving no clues behind for their predators which are very many. So, in conclusion, these clusters of caterpillars aren't all just hanging out together. They intentionally gather on the tree trunks or on the branches like this for the purposes of molting together up to five times in hopes of safety. This event only lasts for a couple of hours, and as fast as they all have collected together, they'll be redispersed and back on with their lives before you know it. And now that it's the end of August and we're starting September, these are the second generation caterpillars and they're almost to their fifth instar and ready to drop into the ground to pupate over the winter and be ready for us next May. And now that you know what they are and what to look for, I hope you'll be able to spot one. And until then, I'll see you in the woods.